Hello and welcome. In a previous tutorial on YouTube, I showed how to make digital stars like the one shown here. Today, I will demonstrate how to use a similar technique to create background designs. I call them emerging patterns because they develop in surprising ways out of natural form and texture as we apply symmetry through digital software. I have a lot of fun making them and want to share my experience with you. If you have any familiarity with Photoshop or other graphic software, you will find this very easy to do. I have just completed this teddy bear Choya design. It is an important addition to my cactus hugger collection. I call this a mandala array. In future tutorials, I will show how to create the digital mandalas and the expanded arrays. What I want to point out here is the red radial background behind the mandalas and the gray thorn rectangular field behind the whole creation. Note how the foreground floats on top of the background and how the background adds to the organic feel of the whole piece. The idea is that the background enhances the foreground creation by adding another level of interest and complexity. In order to not make it too long, I go into only so much detail in this tutorial. It should be enough for anyone with a working knowledge of Photoshop, Corel Photo Paint, or similar software. If you need more detail, contact me and I can answer specific questions or work with you one-on-one. -on -one. I will give you contact information and links to other resources at the end of this video. We start with a photo of a teddy bear Choya cactus. One needn't be a great photographer to use this technique. Do take lots of pictures at different angles and distance so that you have lots of photos to choose from. Even poor images may be useful with this process. For example, in this next photo, the flower is out of focus. That makes it a poor picture if we want to work with the flowers. However, the thorns behind the flower are in focus, and that is what we are interested in here. We are going to cut out a rectangular section of thorns using a mask. The blue rectangle represents our mask. If you need help using mask, contact me and I can show you the process. It is the area that we are going to extract from the photo. Here we have a page with a 4x6 grid, which we will use to create our background. You could use other grid formulas based on multiples of 5, 7, and so on but I find this one easy to use and very useful. By all means, feel free to experiment and expand on what I show you here. We extract the rectangle and place it on the grid page. It has been widened to fill the square of the grid. Next, we duplicate the square and flip it horizontally to create a mirror image. As we zoom in, you can see the pattern beginning to develop. Next, we duplicate this pair and rotate them 180 degrees to create this basic quad. Again, as we zoom in, you can see the pattern emerging. I think of it as latent in the natural form, just waiting to be brought forth as we apply the symmetry. We continue to duplicate this basic quad and fill the page one step at a time. Try to paint something like this deliberately. I like the surprise element of watching the design develop unexpectedly. Would you have anticipated this beautiful, elegant design to result from our original thorn rectangle? Here we have shrunk our design down to a quarter of the page and expand it to create a 16 by 24 grid. We could carry this process further if we wanted and make it as complex as we need. 
For our purpose here, we return to the 4x6 pattern and desaturate it to create this gray version. To use it as a background, we have darkened it. We could also blur the image so as not to compete with the foreground. Although with the thorn patterns, I usually keep the image sharp. We follow that with a red overlay. Through the magic of Photoshop, we could turn this array any color we want. I have chosen the red because it complements the flower color. You can see that the border floats on top of our background. This gives your images depth and or an organic feel. It also adds a level of interest which a solid background lacks. In time, I will get a screencasting software which will allow me to show you my computer screen as I create these intriguing designs. In the meantime, I hope you share some of my fascination with the process. Now I want to show you some other backgrounds that I've done. I want to give you a sense of the full potential this technique offers. This is another cactus thorn pattern made from pincushion cactus. This technique can be applied to so many forms and textures that it is not possible for me to exhaust the possibilities. A thousand artists could work at this full time for a lifetime and still only scratch the surface. That is why I want to share the process and inspire others to go beyond what I have done. Here we turn the background blue to work with the pink pincushion flowers which make up the foreground. The next background is made with a slice of whole wheat bread. If we change the color and darken this, it works very well as a background. This is part of my breakfast series. As we fade into the next frame, we have a pattern made with a bowl of applesauce. I made swirls in the applesauce with a spoon. Next comes a bowl of Rice Krispies. You see, a simple breakfast can be an inspiration, and I'm leaving out the background I did with cantaloupe. The next background pattern is made from a close-up of the skin on the back of my hand. Of course, I've changed the color to a blue. Now we turn to a pattern made with the fronds of the yucca plant. The first one shows it with natural colorization. The next shows it as it is turned to a light blue. I have used both with my yucca mandala to give very different effects to the overall designs. We can also use flower petals to give us background patterns. Here I have used a close-up of Choya flower petals. Aside from using natural textures, we can create patterns from geometric designs. In this frame, I have taken a Celtic knot mandala that I created and duplicated it ac across the page. Next, I duplicated this and offset it to create this more complex pattern. Finally, I use overlapping circles to create this attractive pattern. You could do this with triangles, rectangles, stars, and so on. Up to now, we have shown you the rectangular background patterns. I want now to show you how to make radial backgrounds. In a previous tutorial on YouTube, I show how to make what I call digital flower stars. I used calendular flower stars for that series of lessons. Here we are using stars made from the teddy bear choya thorns. We start with a natural colored star and then turn it red to use it with a flower mandala foreground. Sometimes I will just expand these stars to fit a rectangular page. It can give a design a whole different feel. There are times when one or the other radial or rectangular uh, background works best. 
I present another teddy bear choya rectangular thorn pattern here. You can apply Photoshop filters to create a variety of special effects to your designs. One that I often use is a radial gradient which makes the center dark and lightens it gradually towards the periphery. I show you this array to point out the stars which are a part of the design. We use one of them to create another radial background. We start with a full color star. As we zoom out and back in, you can appreciate the beautiful design. We now desaturate it to create this gray version. So we have taken what was previously a foreground element and made it into a background. Finally, we superimpose our mandala over the top. So you be open to various ways of using all of these elements and develop your own style. Some of these backgrounds are attractive enough to stand on their own as a piece of art. I use some of them as designs for men's ties on my Zazzle store. I call it my Emerging Patterns Tie Collection. I want to show you one more trick. I offer an image which I call an expanded array. This could be extended even further. Many of these arrays could make great wallpaper design. What we are going to do here is make the expanded ray into a background. So you see, almost anything can become a background applying the digital tools at our command. We superimpose it over a thorn background and reduce its opacity so that it fades the color and blends into the thorn pattern. Finally, we layer a flower border over the top to show you the resulting effect. Again, think of different ways to use this process and make it your own. With any of these designs, you could man manipulate them further by layering other elements or painting over a section. For the most part, I like to keep it natural. Skype, in general, is a great way for one person to show another how to do anything on a computer. The teacher can demonstrate the process and the student can watch the cursor move, observe his files are opened, see an image change, his tools are applied, and so on. The teacher can explain verbally and the student can ask questions, ask to go back and repeat something, and so on. Alternatively, the student can show his screen to the teacher as he tries out a new procedure. The teacher can talk the student through the process and correct as needed. And they can talk with each other through each step. So if you need to learn or want to teach something on computers, give this a try.